Ugh. Hello, fellas and the ladies. It's time to finally, at last, predict the Oscar nominations. They are coming on Tuesday. It's already here. That's fucking crazy. Unlike most years, I have like a sense of confidence going in. This time, nope, not that. That's a, that's not the case. Other than the best picture category, I, I feel like every category I'm like kind of like like running around with a bag over my head. I'm at a point where I'm like not even going to try and get like a perfect score because I don't think I'm going to. So I'm going to at least try and get four out of five in each category. I don't know. It feels like the safest route for me at this rate in time but let's just jump right into i think arguably the easiest category which is unfortunately best picture it really does look like we're just gonna get the pga 10 oppenheimer you know i i, I think it's probably just gonna win at this rate but the holdovers is proving stiff competition barbie is probably gonna annihilate with nominations probably even gonna lead the nominations pot potentially i should say then you have poor things which could also lead kill till five moon which could lead yeah, i'm about lead i don't think kill till five moon is gonna lead but i think it's gonna get double digit noms everything in the top five other than the holdovers is probable that it's gonna get double digit nominations after that anatomy will fall in the zone of interest i think they solidify themselves at bafta past lives and maestro american fiction they're all gonna get in it's kind of become the question kind of becomes what's number 11 and they don't really have a concrete answer maybe it's spider-verse because it's like the only other movie outside of this 10 that's guaranteed another nomination but like what animated feature and score like you know or saltburn i don't buy that color purple i think it's time has just been passed i guess i could acknowledge the uh, origin elephant in the room and just point out that there's no fucking way that that that's gonna work this time last year francis fisher was very um you know i get it you guys are all panicked because of what happened last year but i think this year a francis fisher is just going like origin me like origin whereas last year it was very much centered on andrew riseboro and then and also like it just didn't reach near the same volume but yeah i know Cher said she liked it but like Last year, you had Kate Winslet and Edward Norton calling it the greatest performance in history. Like, that's just not what this is. I would be pretty surprised if it worked out again. I guess I won't say it's impossible. I just got burned last year. But, like, you know. Honestly, let's just move on to Best Director, which is a fucking mind screw. Christopher Nolan's gonna get in. And he's gonna win. That's, you know, we don't gotta do much there. And then after that, it's... Again, I'm not even going to like try and get a perfect score here, because I know I'm not going to. I've accepted. I'm, I'm at peace with the fact that I will not get a perfect score. But I am going to try and get four to five, and I think the safest route is what I'm doing here. I, mm, is that, I don't know if that's even true. I think Martin Scorsese, I know he he missed BAFTA, but like he's Martin Scorsese. He kills the fire moon. He, yeah, he's going to get it. After that, I think Alexander Payne, I know he got that globe snub, which is definitely worth thinking about, but I do think you know he's in a really good position. And again, I'm standing by, like a lot of people are saying Greta Gerwig is the snub. I stand by that that would be weird. Like, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it would be weird. And then I, I feel like a part of me wants to predict both of the internationals, both Justin Trier and Jonathan Glazer. But I, I don't know. I don't have room for that because I really think Gerwig is going to get in. <laughs> like, if Gerwig misses, fuck. But, like, I don't know. I know she's, like, populist and the director's where just snobby. George Miller, Mad Max Fury Road. Just because Denis Villeneuve misses once doesn't mean, like, you know, that erases everything. I, I do think that Gerwig will go along with a very steady Barbie package. And with that in mind, which, why do I not have Yorgos Lanthimos in? I'm not feeling like Poor Things is going to annihilate. I feel like it's weirder that Yorgos missed BAFTA than Greta. Like, that's more of a, why wouldn't they do that? And yeah, jury, jury. It's because of the jury. That is why he missed. But, you know, again, I don't love that it happens. And a part of me is just kind of like, okay, but is Lanthimos really below Trier or is Trier really above? I think I'm going to put them both at six. I'm going to bend the rules a little bit. It's my channel. I can do whatever the fuck I want. I'm going to put them both at six and see how that looks. I think Glazer does have the edge over Trier. Um, you know, it's a little bit more technically savvy than Anatomy of a Fall is. Although, granted, last year, all quiet. But I know people are going to say, oh, but Edward Berger is, uh, you know, not an auteur, like a known auteur, like, like um, you know, what's his face? <laughs> Ruben Osland. And to that, I would say that yeah, there's like an element of truth to that, but that's that's like assuming that's the only reason Berger missed to Ausland. Like that's is that really the only reason? Is that really, you know, what we're going with? I'm not buying that fully, but again, I am giving Glazer the edge over Trier. It could be both. It could be Trier and not Glazer. I, I I am actually more considering a Glazer snub than most people are. 
I think the only person here that I can say without a shadow of a doubt will not miss is Christopher Nolan. I don't think Celine's song is going to happen. I think that, you know, that Globe nomination was great, but it feels like that was a one-time thing. Bradley Cooper, nah. Fuck you. <laughs> Honestly, as long as you stick to that top seven, you're going to get three right at least. I'm just trying to get that fourth one right. On the best actor. All right. Killian Murphy and Paul Giamatti. We all know they're duking it out for the win. They're going to get in. They're lock. I don't know which one's going to I have my best theory, and that's Killian Murphy, but I don't know. But they are getting nominated. This is a nomination video. Bradley Cooper is not going to win. He tried so hard, but he's not going to win. But the nomination is going to happen. And then I'm still, like, very confident that Jeffrey Wright's going to get in. I know he missed BAFTA, but, like, that's kind of it. And, like, you know, it kind of tracks that he would miss there. So, I know I predicted him, but, like, you know, meh. Whatever, ignore that. <laughs> I do think Jeffrey Wright is on track to get his first nomination. Uh, American Fiction is going to get nominated for Best Picture. He's going to come along with it. Yeah, he'll he'll get in. I have no question about it. It's that fifth slot that I'm a little wishy-washy about. And it's between Leonardo DiCaprio for Kills of the Flower Moon and Coleman Domingo for Rustin. Uh, now, conventional wisdom says, oh, go with Coleman Domingo for Rustin. Because he got everything. And Leo missed Saga BAFTA. And that's good evidence. I don't know. I, I, I think I'm getting Michelle Williams vibes out of Leonardo DiCaprio. He is still like Leonardo DiCaprio for Killers of the Flower for a Martin Scorsese movie. And so I, I feel inclined to lean towards him. But then again, Coleman Domingo is playing Bayard Rustin. He gives a very flashy role and he got in everywhere. It is time for Coleman Domingo to get an Oscar nomination. Like we all want that to happen. But I am getting this sense that he's going to be that guy that gets everything but misses anyway. His movie, Rustin is nothing. Like Rustin is a nothing movie. I like the movie a lot. But it's nothing. I want to. I, if Domingo got nominated, I would be so happy. I would do backflips around the house. But um, I swear to God, I think it's Leo still. I know people are like kind of souring on Leo because they're wrong and they don't realize how fucking brilliant his performance is. And I feel like he'll edge Coleman Domingo out, unfortunately. And I don't really see that much else after. Could Zach Efron, you know, get redeemed by the Oscars? I, I'm giving it like a 10% chance. Like maybe. Like, maybe they could do something like that, but I, I'm just, I'm not going to hold that hope. For some reason, no no awards body, like, bothered with the Iron Claw. Andrew Scott, I there was a few things I needed from Andrew Scott to for me to buy him getting nominated, and none of it happened. I needed a good critics push. He didn't get that push. He barely even got nominated for critic awards. I needed a BAFTA nomination. He didn't get it, despite the movie doing well. Sorry, I can't, I can't predict him. I just can't do it. Best Actress. Okay, there are... I'm going with the easy five here. <laughs> Miss Stone and Lily Gladstone. We all know they're duking it out for the win. And they're going to get nominated. Cedric Hooler, Anatomy of Fall. 100% lock. Could even win BAFTA. Like, I'm not like convinced of that. I think Emma Stone's just going to win. But it could be Cedric Hooler. And Margot Robbie is going to get nominated. Y'all can keep, like, you know, denying her for, like, not... Like, you're running out of reasons to deny Margot Robbie. She's going to get in... Like, deal with it. <laughs> and I do that, and I, I'm like, okay, but at the same time, if I'm saying this, I gotta say that about Carrie Mulligan, too. But I do think it's different, because they both got in everywhere. But I do want to point out that Carrie Mulligan did shit with critics. And you might be thinking, oh, she didn't do critics. Well, you could have said that about Margot Robbie, and she got everything. Well, you could have said that about Margot Robbie, but she did really well. I am going to predict Carrie Mulligan, though, because I, I don't really have much reason to not predict her. Other than the fact that, like, Maestro... Bradley Cooper just made himself, like, the de facto face of that movie. That's got to matter for something. And I do think that, um, in the event that Greta Lee comes in and swaps out Carrie Mulligan, uh, swaps out somebody, it, it, it would be Carrie Mulligan. Because I really have a hard time seeing a Margot Robbie snub at this rate. And that Benning, could that happen? I, I suppose that could happen. That could be something I'm just, like, in denial about. But, like, I don't know. I feel like Sag and globe isn't like the greatest combo in the world but you know they could just like go simple and say in that betting i'm not counting that possibility out after that i'm not really i don't really see natalie portman happening i've already went over origin i don't really see this push really mit like morphing into something with Anja Ellis. she's not even like the center i haven't really heard her name come up like th throughout this push other than like these like instagram live streams that they're doing while they're promoting the movie i feel like that's something people need to remember like yeah if it seems like origin's being like pushed more recently it just it's coming it just came out Tangela Moreno no like no just now <laughs> I know she got BAFTA like that's pretty good for her but like she's still like what like a, a first time performance in a movie that's not getting nominated for best picture now on supporting actor Robert Downey Jr. probably gonna win Ryan Gosking if he if Robert Downey Jr. loses it's the Gosking Robert De Niro I think he solidified himself he there's no a question in my mind that he's getting in it's the last two slots that there's some ambiguity here I okay let me just go off by saying I don't buy Sterling K. Brown I, I remember watching American Fiction and be like, 
Sterling K. Brown? Like, I remember, like, I, I talked to friends after, and they were like, oh, maybe Sterling K. Brown. I'm like, really? He got SAG. I, I don't know how that, I, I, I kind of thought that could happen, but, like, I didn't think he would actually get it. I, he's in the conversation no matter what, and maybe, 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 maybe he does sneak in, but I'm, I just, I just do not buy it. Dominic Sessa, he just got BAFTA. I'm, I would love it, but I, if Holdovers does really well, then maybe, but I'm gonna say he does not get in. That leaves Charles Melton and the Poor Things Boys. Now, confession. I never had Charles Melton in my five. He should win the fucking category. He is, like, stu stupid good. Problem is, May, December is just fucking... <clears throat> which is awful, because it's a fucking perfect movie. But, unfortunately, Melton, like... Yeah, no, he, he, he didn't, like, sweep with critics like we thought he would. He didn't, like... He didn't get SAG, nor get shortlist, longlisted for BAFTA. And that leaves the Poor Things Boys, though, which... I, one of them is gonna get in. Like, I would be really shocked if neither got in. Do I just, and, and with the tradition of me just trying to get four for five, do I play safe and predict both? Because, you know, Ruffalo and Defoe both have really good cases for a nomination here, but both of them have been, you know, missing out on on two things. Well, whereas BAFTA snubbed them both, and Globe got both of them in. I'm gonna predict both just to play a sick, because I think one of them is getting in, and if I predict. Defoe, not Ruffalo, and then Ruffalo gets in, not Defoe. I'm, I get that's fucking that might be three out of five right there. And I predict Melton, but Sterling K. Brown gets in. Like, yeah, you know, I gotta play it safe. And I think the safest option, and right now, in my opinion, is that both Bull and Defoe and Mark Ruffalo are getting in. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, if Charles Melton gets in, you'll get the happiest reaction. But I'm gonna stick with the poor things, boys. All right, supporting actress. I hate this category. <laughs> this is so bad, dude. The Brian Joe Randolph's gonna win. I'll be once gonna get nominated, and so is Danielle Brooks. I thought about the whole Danielle Brooks getting snubbed idea, but like, I don't know. I'm not seeing much evidence to support that. Yeah, she's probably gonna be the only nomination for her movie, but like, she's gotten everything. I don't know. If she gets snubbed, it's like a surprise. I'm not going to go there. After that, it's anyone's game, honestly. I know the easy answer is Jodie Foster for Nyad, but I had a, I had a, uh, I had a rule that I gave to myself at the beginning of the year. Last year and the year before, there was somebody that got everything it needed, and I knew in my gut that they were going to miss, but I predicted them anyway. In 2021, it was Ruth Nega. Last year, it was, um, not 2021, you know what I meant. Last year before, it was Ruth Nega, and then, um... Last year, it was Viola Davis from Edge Redmayne. And I told myself, if I felt this way about someone else, I'm not doing it. I feel this way about Como Domingo, and I feel this way about Jodie Foster. I don't think Nyad's getting anything. Like, yeah. So I'm actually going to be ballsy and say Jodie misses. Even though I do think that if we're being safe, Jodie Foster should be in. But I don't think, if, if, if I'm being honest, if I have to pick a safe fifth slot, I think it's America Ferreira for Barbie. I think America Ferreira is likely going to coattail uh, off of Barbie, but I don't know. I'm, I'm that Barbie wave at the beginning of the season. Granted, it was just BAFTA. It's just BAFTA that it did poorly at, but it's possible that it's slowing down a little bit. And I feel like it's gonna have some ramifications. If, if usually supporting actors at first, if America Ferrera gets in at the beginning of the morning, I know what day we're going in for. But I'm gonna predict a Ferrera snub for now. Now Sandra Huller just got in for BAFTA. That's it. Are we really going to say Sandra Huller gets doubled? I don't know. That feels a little risky. But I feel safe going with her for Zone of Interest. It, I mean, it's again, it's not really a performance people are clamoring to get in for. I could be really, like, mis like misguided on this prediction. And maybe I'm going to slap myself on the wrist for taking out America Ferreira. Fuck, am I taking out America Ferreira? Am I really doing that? For Sandra Huller? Why is... Okay, realistically... Why is Sandra Huller more likely than America Ferrera? Like, I actually want someone to explain that to me. Not really a real explanation to that. And people go like, yeah, Sandra Huller's good. Shut up, nerd. America Ferrera is fucking great in Barbie. Sorry. Man, fuck, I might have fucked up. Know what? On air change. I had Rosman Pike, but I'm gonna switch back and say America Ferrera gets in. I do think Rosman Pike really could happen, but I feel safe going with America Ferrera. That's how I feel... That's, like, the safest I feel. So I'm going to go with it. Rosman Pike could happen. I think if there's a Kathy Bates situation, it's going to shock us. So I'm not going to do it. People are probably going to predict Penelope Cruz for Ferrari. Uh, not a bad theory. It makes sense. But I do, like, I, I just, I don't know. People don't just get in off of just SAG. I don't know. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Although she could happen. Julianne Moore, it kind of feels like that's past. It feels like that that's kind of, like, gone. Could they really, like save Rachel McAdams for either God, it's me, Margaret. I'm not gonna predict that, but I think it's actually more possible than meets the eye. 
Original screenplay. Okay. Holdovers is getting in. Probably going to win. Anatomy of Falls is getting in. Past Lives is getting, getting in. And at this rate, I think I have to just suck it up and say that awful, terrible maestro script is going to get nominated. I wish WGA was happening before the Oscar nomination so I can get a clear idea because Anatomy of Fall I don't believe is eligible for uh, WGA. I don't know if Past Lives is, but I, I know Anatomy of Fall isn't. So I, I'm actually I'm really running blind with um, this last slot here. It could be... So I, I've, I've seen people float Saltburn, and there is logic to it, but like it didn't even get BAFTA. That's not, I, I can't predict it. You know, I just can't do it. May, December's not doing very well. Maybe I'm just being hopeful by predicting it, but I feel, I feel safe as going May, December a little bit. But it, it could be air. It, I'm not, I'm not denying it could be air, but I actually, I, I feel good with May, December still. I, it's having a rough season. I can't deny that. It kind of peaked and then it dropped. I kind of felt like what was going to happen. Maybe screenplay can hold on. And I'm still going to say it get, May December gets into screenplay. Maybe it can be a revival thing. I don't know. But I'm going to predict it May December. I, Air, maybe. Saltburn. I need proof of that. I'd add screenplay. Let's just... We'll, I'll make this one quick. Barbie, Poor Things, Parent Conviction, Oppenheimer, Kills a Fireman. All but Strangers, Zone of Interest, on the outside looking in, it's going to be this five. If it's not this five, I would be really really shocked cinematography okay oppenheimer it's gonna get in it's probably gonna win poor things is gonna get in people are gonna float a maestro snub i don't buy that for a second and then kills the fire moon is gonna get in fifth slot what are we gonna do with that there's a couple different options you can go with here you can go with saltburn which has very showy cinematography you can go with barbie which to go along with a humongous barbie fuck fest which could happen i don't know if that's gonna happen though you can also go with El Conde, which got the uh, DGA nomination. It's in black and white. It's very, very good work. Or it could be Zone of Interest, which got the BAFTA nomination. I think you could really go either way with these four. But I feel the safest with Zone of Interest. I remember watching it and being like, no, that could be a cinematography nomination. It's not like the prettiest portraits in the world. But I also, some of the things in cinematography stood out to me. Like, especially on a second viewing. Like, yeah, it's not painting the prettiest portraits in the world, but like, Certain things like how like colorful it looks, despite how dour the movie is. I do think the zone of interest will get this slot. Could there be like a weird thing, like the holdovers or anatomy of a fall, like weirdly like fucking snakes its way in? I don't know. It's kind of crossed my mind, but I'm not gonna predict it. Editing. Oppenheimer's gonna get in. We all know this. Killers of the Flower Moon's gonna get in. We all know this. Thomas Schumacher. Don't doubt her. After that, uh, you know, there's a couple ways to go. Could be Barbie. Probably gonna be Barbie. You know. Barbie's probably just going to pick up nominations. Holdovers might just get in based on being a, a top-tier Best Picture nom contender. It could be Poor Things as well. I feel like Poor Things is going to miss some stuff, though. I don't know what it is. I just feel like it's going to like miss some key things. I, I know I'm predicting both supporting actors, but I think one of them is going to miss. And then I'm going to go with Anatomy of a Fall in that last slot, because I feel like Anatomy of a Fall is going to have a pretty great day tomorrow on Tuesday. Yeah. I don't know, but everything's weird. It could just be a, I, I, you'll notice my top 10 is just the best picture lineup. And that's kind of what it is. Other than Oppenheimer, it kills the fly moon. It can go other, like many different ways. I do think, uh, a poor things can miss. Zone of interest could also get in. Cause I noticed how fucking great the editing is on the second viewing. Oh, I love zone of interest. Past lives could, you know, America or American fiction could be that like, they could be like, Oh, the best picture nominees get them in there. Maybe Maestro does that. I hope not. <laughs> Well, Maestro really is reliant on the long takes, I will say. Maybe that actually... Yeah, okay. No, I'm going to put Maestro at 10, actually. Let's go on to production design. Uh, I Kind of similarly to cinematography, the top four. They're not missing. Barbie, Poor Things, Oppenheimer, Kills the Flyman. They're getting in. Barbie's probably going to win. Poor Things could, you know, edge it out, but, you know, probably going to be Barbie. After that, I don't know. I Wonka, I was going to predict that, but, man, why did it get the goose egg at BAFTA? I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Zone of Interest got BAFTA. Am I really just going to go 5 for 5 with BAFTA? I don't know. Maybe. It'll be Asteroid City. You know, it's Wes Anderson. I know he missed the French Dispatch. Okay, here's the thing. French Dispatch missed, yes. But I also think that that only happened because, like, you know, that's for Wes fan Anderson fans only. Like, if you're not a Wes Anderson fan, you're fucked. That said, you can say the same thing about Asteroid City. So I am actually going to say that misses. And I'm going to go with the Zone of Interest. It plays a pretty uh, crucial role in the um, in the film, being that like it's you know connected to like in the concentration camp and shit, like the house. It also looks really extravagant, despite how monstrous everything that's going on is. But I am actually gonna say the zone of interest for this fist slot. I feel safe with that. I'm gonna go with that one. Yeah. Costume design, Barbie, and poor things, definitely. Kills the Flower Moon. Yeah. I am gonna go with Napoleon. 
you know, I don't like that that's happening because it's a bad movie. Costumes aren't bad, and it's been getting doing pretty well in the category. Blah. And then that leaves that last slot, and I feel kind of confident that it's Maestro. Mark Bridges did the costume design. It's one of the few aspects of the movie that I actually quite admired. You know, it's not the showiest work in the world, but, like, you know, the stuff that uh, Carey Mulligan wears. You know, even some of the suits, I'm like, I, I can remember the suits, you know what I mean? I know people are going to pick Oppenheimer because Oppenheimer has to, like, overperform. But, like, I don't... I They're just wearing suits in that movie. Whereas in Maestro, it's kind of that, but, like, I remember it more. I remember the outfits that Bradley wears a little bit more than I remember the stuff that Killian Murphy wore. Other than, like, the iconic, like, you know, stuff that, like, was from real life and shit. Wonka, again, similar thing. It kind of needed that uh, BAFTA nomination. Color Purple, it just hasn't been doing well in the category. I don't know, maybe it could push through at the end. And I'm going to put Priscilla in there because I want, I really, I really want it. <laughs> going to make him a hair. Maestro, it's going to win still. I know I missed a Lost Grace choice, but it's probably going to win. Four Things is going to get in. I think Oppenheimer, if, okay, I think Oppenheimer is going to tap out at 12. But, and I think it's going to get that 12. I don't think it's going to get any less. But if it were to miss one, if someone said, oh, Oppenheimer got 11 nominations, I would say, oh, it missed makeup. But I think it's going to get in. I'm pretty confident about that. I think Gold is going to get in, unfortunately. I watched Gold. Uh, I don't think it's good. And the makeup's kind of bad. But, you know, it's very showy work. It doesn't look like Helen Mirren. And that leaves that last slot. Go a couple different ways. Napoleon, why is this here? Kills the Flower Moon, why is this here? Ferrari, why is this here? It leaves the other ones. Bo is afraid... It would be so funny if Bo's Afraid got nominated. It could happen. It's like the old, like, it's, it's just the one sequence, granted. But, you know, that could be enough. So I watched Society of the Snow, and I didn't, like, fully buy, like, you know, a makeup nom. But it could happen. It could happen. You know, it's got impressive work. But I am actually going with, I can't believe this, The Last Voyage of the Demeter. It's, I saw it, it's terrible, it's an awful movie, but, like, I didn't know that, like, the vampire in the movie was, like, actually prosthetic. I didn't know that. That is impressive. I gotta give it to him. And they are a sucker for the prosthetics, and it is objectively impressive work, but maybe the whole Last Voyage of the Demeter of it all could, like, bump it out for Society of the Snow. It's possible. Also, I'm seeing people compare Society of the Snow to All Quiet on the Western Front. Stop doing that. It's not the same thing. If it's Society of the Snow gets in, I'm not gonna go like, All Quiet on the Western Front, the rule. Like, no, it's, it, they're separate. They're completely different things. The, yes, they're also, yes, All Quiet on the Western Front is also an international title. What? We want to score. Again, I, similarly to other categories, I think there's a solid four that should not be underestimated. Oppenheimer is probably gonna win. And then Kills the Flyer Moon is gonna get in. Spider Man Across the Spider Verse is gonna get in. And Poor Things is gonna get in. There is no doubt in my mind that they that, that four is locked in in after that it gets sticky i okay so of the long list i'm gonna of the short list i'm gonna eliminate the holdovers american fiction american symphony and the color purple side of the snow i don't buy it leaves the last nine the zone of interest is 10 minutes of like weird ass score i said back when i saw the film at tiff even if it, it does get in i think it's missing score so i'm sticking by that theory and leaving the other ones Elemental did very bad. It didn't get anything. But it is Thomas Newman, so it could, you know, fucking get its way, it gets fucking dirty paws in there anyway. I do think we gotta be really scared about Indiana Jones. John Williams, man. Fucking John Williams. It's possible he John Williams his way into another nomination. I'm definitely not counting that out, but I'm gonna predict a snub here. I'm gonna go with Barbie in that fifth slot. I, I listened to the Barbie score. It's really good, and Barbie is, like, associated with music. Yeah, the actual songs, but, like, music in general. And I'm feeling a Barbie overperformance. You know, maybe not drastic one, but, like, I'm feeling it coming. So I'm going to say Barbie does get into this category. I also want to point out The Boy and the Heron. I feel like that has unfortunately kind of come to pass. It got that Globe nomination. We all got excited, and then it kind of just... From there. So I'm going to predict The Boy and the Heron. Uh, it's not getting in here. Sound! Oppenheimer. Lock. After that, I think Zone of Interest is a lock. I, that that has to happen. Like, it just has to happen. And hot take, Zone of Interest should win. And other hot take, I actually think there is a world where Zone of Interest beats Oppenheimer in this category. <laughs> Fucking sue me, bro. So I think those two are solidified. It's everything else afterwards that's a little uh, dicey. Maestro has, like, the big... You know, the fucking conducting scenes. You know, with what they did with the music in that movie. I mean, it didn't really do that anything that interesting, but I feel like they're gonna it's gonna get pushed in either way. So I think Macho will get in. Ferrari has been singled out for criticism for its sound work, but you know, it's got the loud It's got those in there. Oh, you know, a lot the and sometimes a crash. So, I, but I am gonna. So I'm gonna predict Ferrari. I'm not gonna be surprised if it misses. That last slot, I swear to God, is gonna be between Barbie and Kills of the Flower Moon. It's gonna be one 
Like, where it's, like, really... Like, they're just in because they're the best picture contender. I'm gonna go with Barbie here just because I think the sound work is a little flashier, whereas Kill the Flyer Moon, you know, you got some gunshots, you got one big explosion. Barbie, you got some musical numbers, you got, you know, your big brawl with the Kens. Either way, it's not, like, really, like... Either way, it's gonna be people going, like, really? But I think it's gonna be one of them. Polian, I didn't even didn't even get BAFTA, right? Also, Bar I just pointed out that Barbie did really well with the MPSC. It's done really well with sound guilds. So I am going to side with Barbie on this one. Killer would be great, but nah. Mission Impossible, I don't know. I, I, I still find it weird that it would be this would be the first Mission Impossible movie to get a Best Picture, a bit an Oscar nomination. Not Best Picture, Jesus. So on the visual effects, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do here. I think the creator and Guardians of the Galaxy would be only like 100% locks in this category. I'm like going to assume that Spider-Verse gets in. Spider-Verse is like the visual accomplishment of the year, arguably. I have a hard time seeing it get snubbed. I'm going to say Spider-Verse gets in. And then I think, I think Indiana Jones in the Dial of Destiny, it's not good work, but I think it's going to happen. And then you, you got your Godzilla minus one. Okay, and look, look, look. Let me, let me just, let me just, like, talk about that one for a second. I want it to happen. It should absolutely get nominated. But I, I don't know. There's a part of it that doesn't really trust them. If it happens, uh, cheers. But I'm going to predict the snub, unfortunately, and go with Napoleon. I feel like Napoleon, I don't know, after, maybe, maybe it is just costume nomination for Napoleon. That, that is entirely possible. But I, I think I'm going to lean towards Napoleon getting in. Society of the Snow, I watched it, and I was just like, eh, no. Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, again, I'd be really surprised if this is the first Mission Impossible movie to get an Oscar nomination. Four things, I just kind of had an epiphany. Like, people have this winning. First of all, no! I just had an epiphany about poor things. I was like, that's not getting nominated for Best Visual Effects. And then it got completely shut out of the Visual Effects uh, Guild. Also, it should be mentioned that the creator and Spider-Verse were the nomination leaders of the Visual Effects Guild, so take that with what you will. And fuck Rebel Moon. Animated feature, Spider-Verse is gonna win. Boy and the Heron is gonna get in. <laughs> that was an unintentional rhyme. In. Unintentional rhyme in. Uh, after that, I think Elemental and Ninja Turtles... I, and then the Mona. I think this is. I think that's our five. I think that's our five right there. Suzume, could that sneak in? Maybe. I would like it. I love it a lot. Chicken Run. I mean, it, it's not weird that that got BAFTA. Of course, it got BAFTA. They do love their uh, stop motion though. So you know, take that with what you will. Robot Dreams. I saw Robot Dreams. No. Nah. No. It's a silent movie that feels like it should have been a short film. No. No. Probably not. I know a lot of people are getting excited about it, but I'm saying no. International feature. It's not of interest. Society of the Snow is also going to get in, and I feel really confident that Fallen Leaves is going to get in. I also do think the Taste of Things is going to get in. I've heard great things about it. Shout out to France for making the most boneheaded, moronic decision in the history of the Academy by not submitting Anatomy of a Fall, which would have which would have been a guaranteed victory. Like, y'all can be like, oh, it would have been a race. No, no, no. It would have fucking, like, it would have wiped like, its ass was out of interest. And then that last slot. Uh, I'm seeing the teacher... At the time of filming, I'm seeing Teacher's Lounge this afternoon. So maybe... Maybe uh, afterwards, uh, I will uh, change my tune. But I am going to go with a snub until, uh, until then. I haven't seen a lot of these. I have I have seen Perfect Days. I would love it to happen, but it hasn't gotten anything. Which kind of makes sense, because it's a very slow movie about a guy who cleans toilets. It's a perfect movie, but I don't think it's getting in, unfortunately. I, I, I kind of looked at 20 Days at Maripol with some, like... Maybe go, hmm, I think that might, it might be that. I think that might be our winner right there. I think that, like, it could get that documentary and foreign international title um, nomination tie-in. doesn't happen every year, of course, but, like, it could be. It could happen again this year. I also thought about happening for four daughters, but that's not doing as well as I thought it was going to do. Promised Land, yeah, Matt, other than the fact that Mads Mikkelsen is in it, meh. Mother of All Lies, perhaps? Io Capitano, perhaps? I like my five. I'm going to go with that five. Song. I'm just kind of, what was I made for? Are probably going to be the Barbie songs. If there was three allowed, I would definitely have Dance of the Night in here, but I think it, it, it's only two is allowed. So I, I, I do think that Dance of the Night is going to be the one that suffers for that. Fire Inside for Flamin' Hot. A, it's Diane Warren. It's going to get in. And B, it's actually kind of banging. <laughs> like, I actually, I was listening. I'm like, this kind of smacks. So I think it's that. So I think that's going to get in. And I, as much as I don't want it, that Road to Freedom song from Rustin has done really well. I'm going to put it in. Now, that fifth slot's tricky because all the options that, like, were nominated precursors aren't options here. Peaches, thank the fucking lord, is out. The Wonka song is out. The fucking, what else? Like, what else? Is, like, that, that weird-ass uh, Bruce Springsteen song, the gun at the Globes, is out. So there's not a lot of, like, real options you can go for from precursors. There's actually none. <laughs> like, there's actually none. So let's do some dissecting here. All right, a couple things. The song from Kills the Flyer Moon is not going to get in. I know you guys want that Dear Alien Asteroid City song to get in. Fuck off. I think that... So, Warner Brothers did this thing where they released an AI-generated music video for that Superpower song for The Color Purple. 
That just disqualified it. <laughs> in fact, if a Color Purple song gets in, I think it's Keep Moving, which is actually a really good song. Man, I really wish Barbie could just get the three, so it can just be so easy. I want it to be Am I Dreaming from Spider-Verse so fucking badly, but I am actually leaning towards Quiet Eyes for Past Lives. It's a very vibes song and for a Best Picture nominee. And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, are they really going to go for something like that? And I say, why not? They went with the Everything Everywhere All at Once song last year, so... Why not go with this one? I don't really think the Hunger Games song is getting in. I don't think it ever, ever has. I watched American Symphony yesterday. I guess I'll have to talk that, about that a little bit more in a bit, but I'm going to say no to that one. Documentary feature. Uh, I have actually seen a couple of these. I'm not going to pretend I have the best knowledge of what's going on here. I haven't seen 20 Days of Maripol yet, but I do think that and Beyond Utopia is getting in. I did see Beyond Utopia, and it's tremendous. Total memory I'm waiting to see, but I think that'll get in. Four Daughters. I heard a lot about that one. And 32 Sounds. I don't remember which one it was, but it won something. And apparently the correlation is, like, near perfect. So I'm just going to put that in. I know a lot of people are going to have American Symphony and still a Michael J. Fox movie. I saw both. I loved Still. I thought American Symphony was okay. But, like, they don't typically nominate um, movie documentaries about, like, a single, like, figure. Uh, when it's, like, a like a celebrity. So I'm going to say that they miss. I heard Stamp from the Beginning is really good. Um, we'll see. I, I do plan on seeing Stamp from the Beginning. And that is it. That was the Oscar predictions. I'm not going to do shorts. I don't know either. I don't know the shorts. What do you think I'm a genius? What do you think I'm a nerd? So that's it. That's going to be what happens. <laughs> I will react to the nominations when they come out. And I'm probably going to scream when uh, Barbie does not do as well as I think it's going to do. <laughs> like, subscribe, share, and... I don't know, fuck you, you're a bitch. You're a fucking bitch, you know that? You're a fucking kid.